Hi, this is Dana Rocky, and thank you for watching. Uh, a little while ago, I made a two video series on periodontal disease, and the first video talked about really what the nature of periodontal disease was. I, I showed photographs of uh, illustrations of a periodontal pocket, uh, the, the tooth wall, of course, the gum wall, the significance of that, where the bacteria collects, where the debris collects, uh, overall visual uh, appearance of that. And the second video, video talked about um, the periodontal pocket and pocketing charting, which is one of the main tools we use to uh, diagnose periodontal disease. And um, I went through the numbers, why they're significant, how we do it, how we pictorially lay it out. And as I say, it's one of the main tools that we use to diagnose and, and uh, as we go through treatment to measure whether we're making any progress or not. Those videos were watched a lot and I got a lot of comments about those that were very helpful to a lot of people understanding the problem. So people ask me to make a video regarding a follow-on to that. Well, really, what does that mean and how does that translate into real-world dentistry? So today we're going to look at the oral systemic nature of periodontal disease. We're going to look at a real-world case of a patient that walks into our office and how we uh, effectively diagnose periodontal disease and really how that integrates in with the patient as a whole, principally their medical condition. And that's what I've been talking about a lot lately is the um, oral systemic connection, the medicine and dent the merging of medicine and dentistry, how dentists should be really reaching across the aisle to the medical professionals to begin to help uh, integrate with their work to begin for really for the betterment of the patient's health. That's our goal here in the dental office is to not just give you veneers, but really my passion is looking, looking behind the scenes, going deeper, understanding the patient as a whole and helping treat them for the betterment of their entire body. So here is in fact a case, a patient walked in, a brand new patient walked into our office back in March of, of this year, 2018. And uh, he said, uh, a male, mid fifties, and he said uh, that he was used to going to the dentist every six months and that um, in this particular case, he walked into the dental office saying that he had excessive tartar, he had gum disease, and that um, he was here coming into my office for um, deep gum cleaning. <laughs> we don't often get patients walking in the door telling us that they need periodontal treatment, for sure. We, our average case is we get patients walking in, they wanna know what's going on, we diagnose periodontal disease and treat it. Here in this particular case, we have a patient actually telling us that they're walking in for periodontal treatment. In this particular case, he's talking about having his teeth bleached. Okay, fine. Uh, but key to it is on page number two, where we have gum. He's actually checking and telling us that gums bleed when he brushes and flosses. And he, in fact, has been treated for gum disease before and has been told that he has bone loss around his teeth. There again, that's kind of unusual. That we have patients walking in the door telling us that. Um, and here his experience gum recession. So again, we've got mid-50s male, brand new to the office, pretty big guy, we'll uh, show you that in a minute, uh, telling us that he has periodontal problems and um, in his mid-50s, I would think that's been going on for some period of time. So the real key to it, and I, and I want to emphasize this, and I don't think a lot of dental offices do, to really look at the medical history that kind of gives you a, gives a peek into our window into really what's going on deep in, inside the patient because often the oral systemic connection is taking place and so we kind of want to investigate what's going on. So here we have a patient that, that checks allergy and to me in my mind and in my teaching and our wellness teaching here uh, that allergies mean to me immune imbalance. So something's going on to trigger the immune system to be out of whack, unbalanced as I refer to it, chronically working struggling with something, fix, trying to fix something. That's what that means to me. And in this particular case, um, he's checked the box cholesterol. So I know right off the bat that his liver um, panels are not right. Um, in, our, in our wellness teaching here, in our nutritional work here, that always says to me, maybe that we might want to investigate or do some education regarding nutritional component, maybe a lack of an exercise component. That's kind of what that's telling me behind the scenes. And then in this particular case here, he's checked diabetes. So we'll want to know in a little bit what that means. Is that type two diabetes is controlling or is he insulin dependent? How long has this been going on, what not? So we've got liver and pancreatic issues here. And in my opinion, we've got some immune issues going on here. So in my opinion, this patient is struggling with some health issues, um, medical issues that 
we're going to look into. On the other side over here, he tells us what medicines he's taking. He's taking aspirin, of course, cardiology, uh, for cardiological reasons. He's taking metformin, of course, that's for A1C issues, for the diabetes. Uh, he's taking insulin, that automatically tells us now he's insulin dependent, so we'll want to find out maybe how long that's been going on, whether that was early onset or whether that was later onset after the um, pancreas sort of gave up the ghost. In either case, we've got significant A1C blood sugar issue here and liver pancreas problems. And then synthostatin, of course, um, is their attempt to get the cholesterol numbers in line. But there again, given our wellness teaching and nutritional teaching here, I'd like to see whether this patient with some education and some, some nutritional and lifestyle uh, counseling could maybe help get us back further into a normal range without medicine. Because that's kind of our goal here. That would be my goal for everyone is to be pharmaceutical free. But the current system seems to indicate that you get a diagnosis, you get a pharmaceutical. Uh, what's interesting here is that he's checked good. From m myself, my opinion, and from our wellness teaching and our work that we do, I'd like to see this kind of kicked over into the fair. Um, here, he's got his idea that he's doing pretty darn good medically, but you got to consider these insulin dependent, cholesterol, um, blood factors all out of whack, immune, immune system working triple overtime to do something here. Um, taking medicines, maybe the medicines have at least brought his numbers back more towards um, what we're considering a, a normal range, but in my opinion, the pharmaceuticals really haven't really gotten to the core problem, haven't fixed the issues. So that's how we, how we feel about it here in the office. So I'm looking at this patient. I said he's a mid-50s male, and I use body mass index to kind of give a generalized um, looky-loo in terms of how this patient is working. I realize this is not absolute, but generally speaking, this kind of helps teach us. This is a big guy. He's um, 250 pounds. He's 6'5". Uh, so he's really up here in the significantly overweight category. And remember, I talked about uh, nutritional component, lifestyle components. Maybe if we got this more in line, we'll never get him shorter than 6'5", obviously, but if we got him here to lose a significant amount of weight, that might help the cholesterol issues. That might help the immune and allergy issues, that just might help that. It might help lower his doses of insulin, um, which in the long run will help um, significantly improve the outlook for some of the other medical conditions that may be occurring down along the line with chronic long-term diabetes. So generally speaking, he's in the severely overweight category. Now he walked into the dental office with checkup x-rays. Um, pretty interesting that this patient didn't walk into our office with a full series of pictures. With a known diagnosis of periodontal disease, and I know that given what he said the um, previous dentist wanted to do treatment-wise, um, it's interesting. I, I, I think the standard of care for uh, a diagnosed periodontal patient is a full series of pictures. In any case, we get checkup x-rays only, and we notice that um, we're starting to get angular bone loss in these back molar areas. He does have wisdom teeth here. Uh, I'm not a fan of them because they're so difficult to clean and they, cre and they create a what we call an interproximal between teeth area that's so difficult to clean here. Very difficult to floss and maintain and clean that periodontal, or we keep that uh, periodontal disease free back behind the wisdom teeth. But in this particular case, seemingly on the checkup x-rays that he walked in the door with, it seems as though he's uh, radiographically getting early evidence of bone loss between these back molars. Now, uh, pursuant to those two videos that I made previously, we did our periodontal probing, and this is how we do it. We set it up, here's uppers, of course, and lowers, right side, left side, and we begin to note the numbers. Upper, nothing more than a four, four millimeters in those areas, and the principally between the teeth, which I described in the videos as the primary site that we tend to find periodontal disease. But then again, on the bottom, we're getting some five and six millimeter pockets back in those back areas, both right and left. And so making a pictorial diagram of that, we actually see that. We can actually see our five, six millimeter pockets here. So this is with evidence on the radiographs, the x-rays, and now we have a pictorial uh, diagram of the periodontal probing that we did. We now have five and six millimeter pockets between the back teeth. So to me, in my mind, that really confirms his diagnosis and um, the treatment of choice is exactly what his previous dentist wanted to do, and that 
it would be what I refer to as initial therapy. That would be scalings and root planings in all four quadrants here, and so we have set him up to do that. But the real issue and tying it all together comes from the fact that we, we begin to merge the medicine and the dentistry. This is what I think is exciting, and I think that this is what all dentists should be doing, is reaching and reaching across the aisle to you know, his physicians or other physicians for the betterment of the patient's health. And um, I've talked at length about the oral systemic connection between periodontal disease and diabetes. Um, in my book, there's a basically a one-to-one -one bi-directional relationship between periodontal disease and diabetes. And I'm not sure in this case which came first, the chicken or the egg, whether the chronic long-term insulin-dependent diabetes has led to the periodontal disease, but I do know that now that he has periodontal disease and he has periodontal bacteria in the pockets causing inflammation and those bacteria being released into the bloodstream, I now know through the cycle here that it is going to affect or exacerbate the A1C, the diabetes issue. So we know that now, and that's a big deal. Here's the cycle, how, how it works. Um, we'll want to reduce that bacterial infection in there. We'll want to reduce the inflammatory component in those gums. In other words, we'll want to treat him effectively in using a number of different ways that we have to do that to help him. As I said, I don't think we're gonna get him off his insulin if his pancreas isn't working, but at least he may be able to lower his dose and help reduce the chronic long-term effects of insulin-dependent diabetes on the rest of him. And what would we be talking about? We'd be talking about heart disease. Uh, in this particular case, there is, um, he had reported to me additionally, there is a family um, history of heart disease. Um, we've got obesity. He really falls into that category. A sedentary lifestyle gentleman does no exercise whatsoever of any kind of movement, um, bleeding or inflamed gums. So he really now, breaking it out of just the diabetes realm, we now really have a heart impact on him, a cardiovascular impact that's occurring. Of course, we know we have the diabetes, the bleeding gums, um, abnormal cholesterol levels, all playing with that liver pancreatic system. Um, on, in our future, whether we like it or not, is a new tidal wave of inflammatory and degenerative brain issues, uh, Alzheimer's dementia, that's coming. We're already seeing the effects of that. We're getting numbers now skyrocketing. So really the inflammation, the diabetes, is go going to begin to start working on this system or you should be aware of that. Um, as I said, this gentleman is uh, 6'5 and 250 pounds, so falls into the obese category, severely overweight category. We always look, in that case, the next size larger than uh, 17. We look at, uh, of course, the diabetic component, the cholesterol component, the obesity component, snoring component, a grinding component, occlusion, you know, a nocturnal bruxism. So we always look at that. That may be a component that might be um, adding fuel to the fire. So the bottom line is, here's a, in the real world, here's a patient that walks into the door, tells us he has gum problems, um, is seeking help for that. We do a general assessment. Uh, dentally, we review his medical assessment that's already been done, medicines, health conditions, and all of that. We sort of put that together and want to help educate him and do what we can with our dental license here in, our, in the framework of our dental office to help treat him on, not only locally, but in, with, considering the oral systemic connection, help him get healthier uh, medically. So that's our goal, and of, and of course, um, that's what we like to specialize in, that's what we love treating, we love cases like this, because we really want to help the patient get healthier, um, not just dentally, but medically too, and we think we're doing the patient a really big service for that. And we think that more dentists and more physicians should be thinking about it going bi-directionally, as I've been teaching for some time now. So I hope this was informative, I hope everyone learned a little bit from that, and I uh, really appreciate you watching. Thank you so much.